What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Margaret Corleone Blues and I like to talk about all things movie related and as I'm sure you can tell from my username, I am a massive Godfather fan and especially massive Al Pacino fan. And six years ago, I had the honor and privilege of going to New York City to meet that wonderful man. So today, I'm going to tell you all about that. I'm a huge fan of Al's. I've been a fan of his since I was a teenager, and I watched Scarface, then I watched The Godfather, then I watched Donnie Brasco, then I watched Scarecrow, and you know, it all snowballed from there. I'm a huge fan of him. He's my favorite actor. I think he's like the greatest actor in the world. I love his movies so much. They've been a big source of comfort for me through difficult times, all that sappy crap. He's also just somebody in general that I admire. As somebody with creative aspirations myself, seeing all the things he had to go through in his life to get to where he was and how much he overcame and his perseverance is something that also really inspires me. Getting a little sappy there, but yes, I got to meet him. So let's talk about that whole journey. So Al was doing a lot of Broadway a few years ago and I knew a lot of people who went to go see him on stage and they got to meet him afterwards and I don't really know why I didn't try to go see him on Broadway but I didn't and I really regretted it because I was seeing all my friends in the Al Pacino fandom on Instagram and stuff meeting him and I was super jealous but then I don't know if you guys know of the Quad Cinema in Greenwich Village they are a little teeny tiny movie theater that shows like mostly independent movies and older movies and something they do is they do retrospectives of famous actors and just like show all their movies and sometimes even have them come and talk about their movies for a little bit. So I saw the announcement that Al Pacino was going to be there doing a little retrospective and he was going to be a special guest for a couple of the showings of some of his movies. So I'm like, this is my opportunity to go see Al and I cannot mess this up. I have to go see him. Like, come on, this is a sign from the universe. I'm going to go. I think the whole entire retrospective was going on for like two weeks, but he was going to be there for only two days. So I really had to act fast and get the tickets and he was going to be there there for a couple random movies um so he was there for the showing of sea of love and revolution and that, that was like the same day and then the next day he was going to be there for the showing of wild salome which is he directed it's based on the oscar wild play salome and I got tickets to go see the showing of Sea of Love. He was going to be talking there, doing a Q&A after the movie with the director, Harold Becker. I got the tickets to see Al, and this was like an absolute dream come true. I was so excited. I couldn't believe I was actually seeing him in person. At this point, I wasn't even sure if I was really going to meet him, but I didn't care because I knew for certain that I was going to be seeing Al Pacino in the flesh, and that's all that mattered. I like bawled my eyes out when I got the tickets. It was just the greatest feeling ever when you know you're going to see somebody who's really important to you and yes it was just getting the tickets itself was one of the best experiences of this i just freaking bawled my eyes out so finally the day came to see al pacino i was so nervous i kept on having dreams like leading up to it i was having all these really vivid dreams about something going wrong or like <laughs> i went in my pajamas or something and i forgot to look nice i was like i have to look hot to meet al pacino because He's my celebrity crush, <laughs> besides him and John Belushi, they're my celebrity crushes. I'm like, I gotta look good. So I kept on having dreams that like I was like going, showing up in my pajamas, which is like really stupid, but you know, I was really anxious <laughs> to meet Al and the week before, because I live in Maryland and Maryland weather is all weird and messed up and we had like a foot of snow out of nowhere the week before and I'm like, oh my god, it's gonna snow next week too and I'm not gonna be able to see Elle. Like, I was just so worried that something bad was gonna happen and it didn't. Um, so I took the train with my mom up to New York. So we get to New York. It's great. It's New York City because, you know, um, as Winston said in Ghostbusters, I love this town. Hello, Ghostbusters. Yeah, you gotta love New York. Um, so we got to the movie theater, we got, you know, before that, check the hotel, all that uninteresting stuff you guys don't care about. And we went down to the movie theater and we hung out for a little while. So I was having really bad anxiety about seeing Al Pacino. I was like, oh my god. But anyway, fast forward, it was time to take our seats. And it was really cool because one of my friends from the Al Pacino fandom on Instagram happened to be there. So she sat with my mom and I, which was a lot of fun. And um, we got managed to get seats in the very front row for the movie theater, which was definitely worth it to see Al. The next train the next day, oh my god. 
right before the movie started, I turn around and I see this older woman sitting behind me and I'm like, oh my god, it's Carol Kane. It was freaking Carol Kane was sitting behind me because her and Al Pacino are like lifelong friends. She was in the crowd. So I got to watch a movie with Carol Kane and that is probably the greatest accomplishment of my entire life besides the time that Joe Pesci looked at me. But that's a story for another video. Carol Kane is there. Um, Harold Becker, the director, is watching the movie with us. So we watched Sea of Love and Sea of Love was never one of my favorite Al movies before that, but it's definitely up there in like the top rankings after getting to see it on the big screen. If you haven't seen it, it's a really, really, really great movie. It's um, it has Ellen Barkin. It's kind of like an erotic film noir. Not film noir. It's like an erotic detective murder lust mystery. And it's great. And John Goodman's in it. And I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to say go watch it. It's probably my favorite movie that Al Pacino made in the 80s after Scarface. The movie ends and like the guy, some theater worker was like, or whoever was doing the q and I don't know who he was. He was just a guy. <laughs> he started talking to Harold Becker. They put the seats like at the front of the theater and I wasn't there and Harold Becker was just chatting for a little bit and then all of a sudden the crowd starts going wild and this little short man comes waltzing in with a bunch of security and there's Al Pacino himself right in front of me and i just started crying hysterically not like <laughs> not like out loud but i was crying a lot because it's al pacino who wouldn't cry if they saw al pacino in front of their face like come on so al pacino's there and he's chatting about the movie he's talking about it he talked a lot about how um diane keaton helps him get the role in the movie and you know his chemistry with john goodman and alan barkin and all that good stuff i didn't even think of a question i'm like i was just too in shock to even think of a question so i didn't <laughs> ask him anything i can't even think of anything i'd ask him about the movie it's just a good movie so go watch it but yeah al pacino was in front of me and i was like i couldn't believe it like also he smelled really good i just want to let you guys know i don't know what he was wearing or like the cologne but it kind of was like of because i like vanilla type perfumes and it was almost like a manly vanilla perfume, if that makes any sense at all. But that's like the best I can describe it. And like the second he walked into the room, I could like smell his cologne and it smelled really good. Al Pacino was there and all that stuff. And yeah, he was ta doing Q and A's and talking about the movie and all that stuff. And I was, I don't even remember like half the stuff he said because I was just so like in shock and I was like freaking out. And then finally, sadly, the Q&A ended and it was time for him to leave. And a lot of people rushed to the front to take a picture with him. There was a guy who was like sitting by me who was apparently an extra and the Irishman. He thought like him and Al Pacino were like best friends or whatever. Because this was actually like a month after he finished filming the Irishman. So um, he like pushed through the crowd to like get to Al, which was like, bro, calm down. Like, calm down. We're all here to see Al Pacino. You're not special just he also that guy also pushed me when we were getting to the seats i ordered the tickets on fandango for the movie but you didn't get a physical copy they gave you a physical copy you had to give them like a number or something like they had to scan something and they gave you like a physical little carnival type ticket when you got there and a number on it and it was like the number that you lined up so it was like a very specific you know seating system and this guy pushed me out of the way so if you're watching this you suck and thanks a lot i'm canceling you have a great day sir goodbye but yeah he pushed me out of the way there is a bar in the theater like in the front of the theater and in the back of the movie theaters and like back by the screen there's like a door that takes you to the bar um i guess it's for the celebrities you know so they took Al Pacino through the door and he went bye bye and I was very sad because I didn't get a chance to say hi to him. I didn't even care about, I just wanted to say I love you Al and I was really sad. I did get a chance to take a picture with Harold Becker. He was a, kind of a little grumpy I feel like. So I was walking out of the theater and I walked by Miss Carol Kane. Oh my god. So I'm only 5'3 so I'm not very tall at all. I'm pretty short but I felt like a giant next to her. She's so bitty. 
and she had like her hair all in braids and she was wearing like this long flowy black dress and she looked so pretty and I just love her she's one of my absolute favorite actresses in the entire world and I was just like oh my god it's Carol Kane but I didn't talk to her like I saw a couple of people say hi to her and stuff like that but I didn't really want to she was she had like she was like talking to other people who I didn't recognize like they were like she just seemed like very like a normal person which was really cool and you know she was like her and Al Pacino they've been friends for like decades and decades and decades like they were in dog day afternoon together of course but even before that they were doing Broadway plays I think they were in one with John Cazale even before dog day afternoon so her and Al go way back so I didn't want to bother her because she was there to see her friend and not be Carol Kane so I was like, I'm just gonna leave her be, but I feel so honored to walk by her. It was like, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. She's so pretty. She also knew John Belushi, I think, because, fun fact, John Belushi used to hang out on set of Taxi to hang out with Christopher Lloyd and Danny DeVito, and he used to sing at the rap parties for the seasons, so she probably knew John Belushi. This was before I even liked John Belushi, though, so it's kind of funny in hindsight. And John Belushi, this was also took place in Greenwich Village, which is also where John Belushi lived, so it's always like everything goes back to John Belushi in my entire life. That man is like stalking me or something, I don't know. There he is, and the movie's over. I walk out of the movie theater and it's really crowded there because right after that they're going to be showing Revolution, the other Al Pacino movie, and the director was going to be there for that too. So everybody was lining up and I just kept thinking, don't leave yet, you might see Al. I was like not ready to give up hope seeing Al another time, even if just waving to him or whatever. Like I didn't know what was going to happen. I was just like, don't leave yet. Do not leave yet. Don't do it, girl. Don't do it, girl. So I was like, just chilling. Like, okay, I'm gonna use the bathroom before I leave, but I want to wait till everything clears out, just because I knew I had this gut feeling. Like, don't leave. Don't leave. And I also saw Carol Kane go into the bar where Al Pacino was hanging out. So I got to see her again. Oh my God, my girl, my bestie, Carol. If you see this, let's get lunch because I freaking love you. My friend who was there, she had tickets to Revolution, so she went back into the theater and got her seats and my mom and I were just kind of chilling waiting around seeing what was gonna happen when this guy comes up to us and he's like hey I've got an extra ticket to see a revolution do you want it and I was like hell yes but I felt bad because I didn't want to make my mom sit out in the theater by herself but she was like no go I'll eat popcorn just go do it so thank you to my mom for doing that I was gonna see Al again hell yes greatest day of my life so I go back in the theater and I find my friend who's sitting there and she's in the front row and we're waiting for Al during Sea of Love Al obviously talked after the movie but for this he was going to be talking before the movie because it was late and you know I was got a bedtime I was got to go to bed early so he was going to be talking before the movie with the director so I was sitting there with my friend and we were like waiting for Al to come back and my mom texts me while I'm sitting there and she's like oh Al just walked by me and he just randomly came up and shook my hand and <laughs> that, yeah I was like are you freaking kidding me my mom got to touch Al Pacino before I did and I'm really mad about this and I was like oh I should have stayed out there but anyway it, it all it all worked out in the end so Al comes back in the theater and he actually recognizes my friend from because she asked him a question during the sea of love screening and he shook her hand and he's like i remember you from last time so i thought that was really sweet like al was just in such a good mood that night and he was being very personable with everybody which was really great so he is talking about revolution with the director and it was kind of cool because that's probably considered his worst movie so it's really interesting seeing actors you know talk about their experiences that on movies that weren't probably as commercially successful say like the godfather or whatever and just talking about the importance of failures in creativityness i if you know me i do stand-up comedy and i'm a writer and all that stuff so hearing that is really important um people were also just asking out random questions about his life and stuff i didn't think of any questions to ask him because i was just kind of basking in the moment and I couldn't think of anything. I think now, because I didn't really know about this back then, because I don't think he talked about it as much. 
and I also wasn't doing comedy really back then so but um I also talked a lot lately about how he was doing he used to write sketch comedy before he got really into you know before he got became Al Pacino when he was just Al Pacino and not Al Pacino before his I saw Oppenheimer if I went to his Q&A now I'd probably ask him about his background in comedy because he used to write sketch comedy with a guy who ended up being some big guy at Second City. I can't remember what his name is, but hello, Second City alumni right here. So I would just ask, and I think Al did a little bit of stand-up too, and I'm a stand-up comic. The Q&A was all finished, and I was all sad, and I was sitting in front of the door that Al Pacino went through to get to the bar, and I assumed he was gonna walk through there, and I was gonna like jump up and be like, take a picture with me before you go to the bar or else and no, I'm just kidding not or else um I was gonna ask him to take a picture with me really quick before he went back there because he was being so personable I knew he would he would have done it but he ended up just going out the regular way of the theater and I was like no I'll come back come back like Titanic when Rose is like come back come back that's what I was thinking and I was like oh no I didn't get to say hi to Al but then my friend who was sitting with me, she'd met Al Pacino before at the, I think it was at the stage door for the last Broadway show he did. She was like, go follow him, go, go to the lobby, take a picture with him there. I was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of that? So I like leaped up out of my seat and I sprinted out and he was like, he had like these two huge bodyguards with him and he also had like an assistant with him and he was like walking out and I was like rushing after them. I was like, Al, can I take a picture? I was terrified. I was like, Al, can I take a picture with you? Al, can I take a picture with you? And like, I mean, he wasn't really listening. He was like, he was like looking at like a schedule or something on the iPad. I don't know what he was doing. He was doing something. And I was like, Al, can I take a picture with you? And I was terrified. And then finally his assistant, who was this woman, um, she was like, Al, can she take a picture with you? <laughs> I annoyed her, so sorry about that. I'm sorry that I annoyed you. But, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm sorry. And he was like, yeah. And he turned around and um, <laughs> she was like, oh, I'll take a picture of you guys. I was like, oh, I could just do a selfie. I said the word selfie in front of Al Pacino. I think about that. That haunts my dreams. You know, we are taking a picture and Al just like flings his arm around me. And we take a picture. he was just so happy and smiling and I was like oh, you're my favorite actor you mean the world to me blah 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 all that happy stuff and he was just smiling and nodding and he was just very cheerful and all that stuff which was really nice and my mom was in the lobby this was all taking place in the lobby so my mom was like eating her popcorn watching me meet Al Pacino so she got to see it go down and it was so great and he's about to walk away and then I'm like okay gotta do one more thing and if he says no it's okay because, you know, consent is important. But I was like, can I have a hug? He was like, yeah! And he just freaking squeezed the crap out of me. Oh my god. Like, it was a very tight hug. And I was just, like, sitting there limp. Because I'm like, I don't want to, like, crush Al Pacino. <laughs> I was just like, mm, hug Al Pacino. He, was just, he, like, squeezed me. Which was pretty fantastic. This was the shirt that I wore when I met Al Pacino. And when Al Pacino hugged me, so of course I had to wear it for this video. I should have like put this in a museum or something because Al Pacino touched it. But I've watched it multiple times since then. And I'm a little disappointed in myself about that. I should have saved this and put it in a museum display. And say, I can clone Al Pacino if I want because it has his germs DNA on it. Okay, I'm sorry. But yes, I wore, this was the exact shirt I wore when I hugged Al Pacino. Yay. And essentially, yeah, we hugged. That was it. He started walking away. And then I yell, I love you. And then he turns around. He got the biggest smile on his face. And he goes, I love you too. And he put, like, put, reaches out his arm. I was just like, oh my gosh. So yes, I met Al Pacino and my mom got to witness it. So that was cool. And then I just went back in the theater and I cried silently because there was a movie going on and I'm not an asshole and I was crying and I was crying and I just, so, I felt so happy. And <laughs> my mom texted me. She was like, I heard him say he loves you and all this stuff. And it was just, it was just so wonderful and he was so nice. And I just sat there and I, just, I 
like was in shock and i feel still feel like i look at the picture sometimes and i'm like i still can't believe i freaking met al pacino and another thing about that interaction that i thought was really cool is that like most people like i said earlier most people that i know that have met al um met him at like a broadway show or whatever but i like in a stage door where there's like a bunch of people around but when i met him it was just like me and him in the lobby with like his bodyguards and like his assistant and like the movie theater like one movie theater worker at the concession stand and then my mom it was just very cool that it was just like a kind of like more intimate meeting it was almost like my own personal meet and greet which was really freaking cool and it was definitely like the greatest day of my entire life and i'm so happy it happened and you know they say don't meet your idols well i did meet my idol and it was amazing but unfortunately i can't meet my other idol john belushi because he died so <sighs> so yes i met al pacino he was wonderful he's the best i also met him a second time and that's another story for another day and that's also the same day that joe pesci looked at me so if you you want to take anything away from this video it's that al pacino is very nice and he's a very good hugger and carol kane is my queen and i love her and i i don't know i don't really have anything else to say but all that and you know what i think i'm just gonna leave it there i hope you guys have a wonderful day thanks for watching if you liked this video please make sure to like and comment and subscribe and all that good stuff and of course for like all my videos little jake and i say bye